to Z-axis and back. When kicking an opponent, crack the heel into the target, immediately relaxing the leg after impact. Slightly easier to perform than the spinning round kick, the spinning inside crescent kick follows much the same principles. The weapon used is the inside ankle of the foot or the arch in blocking. Spin 240 degrees and execute an inside crescent kick. Your kick knee should reach its peak at the 240 degree mark and this kick must be performed quickly otherwise the force of gravity will reduce the upward force of the bound. As in the spinning round kick, there must be a two-point pivot on the rear foot for speed and spin control. Try to keep both your knee and foot cocked in tightly during the spin for better balance. When your leg whips around the knee, it should lock straight, with the foot turned slightly in. The movements of the spinning outside crescent kick are the most natural of all spinning kicks. The outside ankle is utilized in striking. Pivot on your front foot, spring the knee up, spin and kick. As your torso twists rapidly, the hip catches up. Don't swing the knee across until the shoulder and hip have reached maximum acceleration. The greatest acceleration should be in the foot. Notice the uniformity of two simultaneous motions. The hip rotating on its y-axis and bound lifting the knee upward. Mechanical advantage is obtained by keeping the body vertical. Torque will be reduced by any imbalance. In terms of actual impact, angular momentum is never changed regardless of the distance of the foot from the body. The spinning twist kick is perhaps the most deceptive of all kicks in that the foot travels along the body in a spin. The weapon is the ball of the foot held in a side foot position. Pivot on the front foot, bound the knee up, rotate the hip out and kick. The hip must turn down slightly on its z-axis on the kicking side in order to bring the lower leg into position. Spinning faster will facilitate bringing the foot in and upward. Watch carefully the elastic restoring force in the muscles of the outer back of the thigh during leg extension. This gives the kick its speed. Visually, the spinning twist kick looks much like a rubber band unwinding. This particular kick is almost impossible to block due to its angle of entry plus the deflective force of the foot turning over. The added momentum of the spin makes this kick considerably more powerful than the basic hammer kick. The heel of the foot is used in striking. Pivot on the front foot. Spring the knee up. Spin and do a hammer kick. Good bound is essential to getting the foot up to its full height. A quick directional change in hip rotation, aided by the forces of gravity and muscle elasticity, accelerates the heel downward. Notice that the ground foot is 240 degrees through the pivot and perpendicular to the kicking foot just prior to the strike, a sign of good balance. Always hold the kicking leg straight throughout the downward motion. Never bend your knee. Kicking an opponent this way drives the force of impact right down to his feet. To the head it can be a killing blow. Proper footwork is the key factor in maintaining precise kicking distance. Notice how the feet are measured apart to establish maximum stability. This basic parallel stepping pattern is designed to help beginners develop a sense of balance when kicking over a distance.
While stepping in a straight line, transfer two-thirds of your weight over the forward foot. Keep your forward knee bent and your rear leg held straight. In reverse, the process is the same. A more advanced stepping pattern is the fighting or L step. Both feet are placed perpendicular to one another, heels one and a half foot lengths apart. The forward foot pivots 90 degrees on the heel as the rear foot advances. This pattern's greatest advantage lies in its ability to facilitate quick changes of direction without having to cross the legs. With two thirds of your weight over the rear foot and one third over the forward foot, greater speed is lent to the forward leg and powerful spring to the rear. When advancing, weight shifted to the forward leg adds speed to the rear foot. In reverse, body momentum induces greater spring off the rear leg. Hip thrust should be timed precisely as the rear leg passes the forward leg, not sooner or later. Forward leg spring is enhanced greatly by bouncing the foot off the ground. In reverse, your weight shifts slightly forward for balance. Springing up in a circular motion adds power to the hip thrust. While bounding, concentrate on pivoting the kicking foot's heel out and upward simultaneously. In reverse kicking, weight is subtly shifted, first to the back leg, then to the front leg. Speed of the forward foot is increased by pivoting it around the knee. Power is generated by springing the knee first slightly to your side, then across. Notice how the torso is kept erect throughout every motion. Don't overstep backward with the kicking foot or you'll lose both speed and balance. With the forward leg, spring the foot up towards your crotch, then thrust out. In reverse, avoid lifting the leg, focus on balance and circularity in the bound. For maximum momentum, spring your rear leg across the fixed leg so that the kicking foot's heel and the fixed foot's toe line up vertically just prior to hip thrust. Always bound off the forward leg so that as the knee crosses the torso, the lower leg rises parallel to its thigh. In order to kick more quickly, notice how the arm on the kicking side extends, acting as a lead-in just prior to the bound, then retracts as the hip begins its thrust. When kicking off the forward leg, arc the kicking knee slightly to the outside of your body, about midway through the bound, for greater power. Swinging too wide with a straight leg upsets balance and limits mobility. Therefore, pivot the kicking foot quickly around the knee after the strike. Don't lean back when kicking off the forward leg or the kick will go wild. Shift your weight slightly forward at the point of impact. To build up a whip-like action in the foot's momentum, you must bound the knee across the pivoting leg during the hip's inward rotation. In a forward leg kick, the key to getting the foot into a position parallel to the ground lies in the hip's rotational agility.
The most common mistake in moving with this kick is to try and reach out with the kicking heel, which thereby reduces its effectiveness. Off the forward leg, make sure that your hammer blow falls absolutely vertical. At any other angle, stability suffers. To promote better balance when spinning, be sure to pass the kicking foot from a shallow bound close to the fixed leg. Bounding too high, too quickly, will offset your torso backwards. When stepping fast with any spinning kick, try to step into the pivot. During retreat, this becomes much more difficult. Notice carefully the difference in tempo between advancing and retreating. The extra change in the direction of your body's momentum will retard your retreat. advancing, this kick may be thrown off the rear leg, although very rarely over a full 360 degrees. However, retreating definitely requires the kick to be executed by the forward leg. Kicking off the rear leg is in most cases intrinsically slower than kicking off the forward leg. To advance more quickly, cross your rear leg behind the forward leg, then kick off the forward leg using the rear leg as a pivot. To retreat faster, hop back with the rear leg just as the forward leg lands, then kick with your forward leg. During an advance, be sure to snap your kicking foot back to your hip after striking and before setting it down on the ground. When kicking into a retreat, the striking foot replaces the position of the fixed foot, which in turn hops back for balance. Sidestepping an opponent improves the perceptual efficiency of an advance. The hop-step retreating motion forms an excellent feint if performed in two separate directions. To increase speed, place the heel of your forward foot so it points towards the target when you step. In retreating, first step back with your forward foot before using it to kick. Impact is multiplied both in advancing due to the kicker's added stepping momentum and in retreating due to the opponent's attack momentum. To be accurate with this kick, sight the target just as the forward foot leaves the ground. The torso must twist extensively. Note here once again the cross behind step used in the spinning round kick. The bound, whether during advancing or retreating, should be performed almost vertically and close to the body. While requiring only the forward foot to pivot, a flexible waist will allow one to spin the shoulders around 180 degrees and discern the target. Keeping the kicking leg straight after striking creates a lateral body shift which can be useful in sidestepping an opponent. When first moving with the spinning twist kick, 
Remember, once you're out of balance, the force of the blow will throw your torso in the opposite direction. Try to relax, thereby reducing any extraneous forces on your body as you walk through the motions. Mechanical energy, or the sum of both potential and kinetic energies, can be increased in this kick by raising the leg higher and drawing the hip back faster prior to impact. Should you miss the target with this kick, don't come down heavily on the ground with your heel. Land on your toes and on the ball of your foot. The advantage of the sliding step lies in its ability to shift one's center of gravity uniformly over both greater and lesser distances than the fighting step while maintaining balance. Executed from an L stance, the rear foot's heel glides up to the forward foot's heel and vice versa in retreating. This type of footwork permits quick controlled movement in any direction. For greater stability while sliding, keep the knees bent and the torso vertical. In order to compensate for advancing or retreating momentum, always keep your weight slightly over the leg furthest from your direction of motion. Try kicking just as your feet come together for greater speed. Utilizing the momentum of the sliding rear leg, which carries two-thirds of your body weight, the forward foot's bound acceleration is multiplied. Notice that the forward heel touches first in advancing and last in retreating. Bound may be aided further by keeping the forward foot's heel off the ground, then simultaneously dropping it as the rear foot springs. When kicking off the forward leg, reverse the above process so that the rear foot's heel drops as the forward foot bounds. Lower your center of gravity by first lifting, then dropping at strike impact, the pivoting foot's heel. This increases the force of the blow. The same principle applies to kicking off the forward leg. Raising the rear foot heel promotes mobility, while dropping it develops a good base for force transference. From the rear leg, you should have an uplifting feeling as the rear foot passes in front of the fixed leg. The fixed leg knee will straighten briefly upon impact. To kick quickly from a slide, the forward foot's heel should never touch the ground. The rear leg must lend more assistance to the advance or retreat. Knee action plays an important role in sliding kicks. They act as springs which absorb the shock of motion and promote rebound which is an asset to kicking fast. Dropping the fixed leg knee slightly and at the moment of impact also helps lower your center of gravity. To further reduce rebound pressure on the knee, tilt the foot slightly to the outside and strike in a faint downward motion. Be 
sure to lock the knee for a microsecond upon foot impact to allow total force transference. Because the sliding twist kick combines so many forces moving in various directions, it is necessary to be sure-footed. Don't allow your center of gravity to shift further back over your fixed leg as a result of advancing or retreating motions. Avoid long slides with this kick in that while advancing you won't be able to get kicking height and while retreating you may fall backward. The hammer kick thrown from an outside crescent kick position is much easier to control when moving quickly due to less hip rotation. The forward sliding motion actually assists in controlling the accuracy of this kick. Watch closely the footwork involved and remember to kick fast, pivot on the ball of the foot, not heel. During retreat, try not to extend your hip forward while spinning. Here we see again the retreating footwork. This pattern is visually slow to a facing opponent and therefore must be used for angling attacks. Retreating is somewhat easier because the body undergoes only one change in direction. Having the feet further apart in a slide ensures balance, but cuts down on speed. To compensate for the opposing directional forces in this kick, keep your torso weight over the pivoting foot. A very powerful kick due to the large...